In the African wilderness, a wild beast desecrates your loved one's graves and spawns disease and blight with just a glance in your direction. Able to wander essentially undetected among people during the day, at night it transforms into a terrifying creature, the Werehyena. Associated with death, gluttony, and greed, this monster joins the ranks of werewolves, selkies, and other shape-shifting monsters. Were creatures, humans or animals that can shape-shift from one form into another, are common across the globe, taking different forms based on the real predators in the local area. Most familiar to a Western audience is the werewolf, but given that there are four different species of hyena in Africa, it's not so surprising that the version of the monster we find in that continent looks more like this than this. There's way more to these monsters than in the Buffy episode. The students have been possessed by the hyenas? Yes. So let's look at the were hyena of African folklore and how the Beta Israel religious group became commonly accused of taking the guise of this monster. I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Monstrum. A were hyena is most commonly believed to be a hyena masquerading by day as a human, as opposed to the more Western figure of a werewolf, which is a human who turns into a wolf usually at night. A were hyena's human skin is the false one, and while a were hyena in human form may be noticed by an unusually hairy body or nasally voice, more often than not, they can walk among humans unnoticed. In the wild plains of Africa, hyenas stand out as repugnant animals. Though often thought of merely as opportunistic scavengers, in reality, their cunning tactics, knife-like teeth, and surprising swiftness make these animals formidable foes. Hyenas are often considered the outsiders of the animal world, characterized as unnatural and disgusting since they consume rotten flesh, and associated with greed since they steal the kills of other animals. While they won't turn down their nose at rotting flesh, hyenas are intelligent hunters capable of taking down wildebeest and antelope. Add in a human skin suit so it can wander among us by day, and you have yourself one terrifying monster. In Sudan, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and some parts of Morocco and Eritrea, where hyena are associated with groups of outsiders who are accused of possessing magical abilities and the powerful stare of an evil eye. Called Buddha or Boda, a derogatory title, Buddha are thought to control animal spirits intentionally or unintentionally, cause illness, poison people's food, and shapeshift into a hyena. Buddha and were hyenas are most often associated with artisan trades like metalworking, weaving, and pottery, and their evil powers are said to be passed on from generation to generation, much like skills of a trade. Almost all Buddha are described as landless people, and the people most commonly associated with landlessness and of being smiths and potters in Eastern Africa are the Ethiopian Jews. Self-identifying as the Beta Israel, this group is a religious and professional minority in the largely Christian country of Ethiopia that coalesced into a more unified group by the 15th century. Origins of the group's faith are hotly debated in scholarship, but what is generally agreed upon is that the group started in one of the so-called heretic communities in Ethiopia. People outside of the group called the Beta Israel Ehud or Falasha, which at their base meaning refers to Jews and the Jewish community, but are also synonymous with exiles and those who practice magic. Both terms are considered derogatory. The name Falasha as a designator for the Beta Israel first became a widespread term in the 16th century and onward. By then, the definition of a Falasi is a landless person, a wanderer, an exile. So how and why did the Beta Israel become associated with were hyenas? In the late 15th and early 16th century, the masonry and carpentry skills of the Beta Israel were highly valued. Their contributions to infrastructure and architecture led to a rise in their economic and social mobility. They were also noted soldiers in the Imperial Army. Their rewards for their skills on and off the battlefield even led to the gifting of titles and land to the Beta Israel, which if you remember, directly contradicts the definition of Buddha. Then in 1769 Ethiopia, Emperor Eos was assassinated, causing political and social upheaval and pushing marginalized peoples, including the Beta Israel, into other trades like pottery and smithing. It also placed their religious practices under attack. These new craft professions of the Beta Israel, smithery for the men and pottery for the women, had one big thing in common, fire. 
Across history, fire is associated with magic, because what's more magical than using fire to transform a seemingly useless material like iron or clay into a knife or a bowl? Christians believed that at Israel's superior skills were supernatural. It is an almost universal theme in African cultures that metalworkers, like the Buddha, are associated with malevolent spellcraft. Such artisans are often landless, moving from place to place as necessary for their profession, leasing farming land as tenants from Christian landholders. Their more nomadic lifestyle alienated them from permanent residence and cast suspicion upon their motives. And people began to wonder, could these individuals practicing crafts with such transformative powers be able to transform their bodies as well? Christians of the day chose a dramatic way to other the community and claimed all the Ethiopian Jews were Buddha, designating them dangerous. In fact, many Christians actually believed the Beta Israel assumed human disguises during the day and returned to their natural hyena form during the night. Very different from other types of were creatures in global lore, most famously the werewolf, instead of a human turning into an animal, these were hyenas were animals that shape shifted into humans. Another bit of anti Semitic lore further stigmatized Beta Israel blacksmiths, claiming they descended from the Jewish smith who crafted the nails used to crucify Jesus. This accusation further classified the Beta Israel as Buddha. Some people even began referring to them as the hyena people, an association that equated them with an animal largely seen as disgusting. These continuing prejudices saw blood libel accusations, the allegations of the ritual murder of Christians, and the Beta Israel were charged with turning into hyenas and draining the blood of their victims by vampiric means, or by afflicting them with an illness that required medical bloodletting. Buddha Ware Hyena lore asserts that this blood was used for rituals, medicine, and nutrition. In modern Ethiopia, Buddha is still a derogatory, alienating insult. And nowadays, it's illegal to accuse someone of being a Ware Hyena. Ware creature folklore exists across the globe. And in my observation, the Ware Hyena is unique in its direct connection to a specific religious group. The relationship between Ware Hyenas, Buddha, and the Beta Israel gives us yet another example of how outsider groups are demonized by people in positions of power and who perpetuate myths like this one as a means of social control to keep those deemed as monstrous oppressed. Thank you. Fancy. Fun fact, werewolves, they actually believed you could turn into a werewolf by putting on a special magical girdle. Or a belt, yeah, seriously.